Okay, I think that's it. As I step on it, good intro. Um, hi, so I'm live, I believe, yeah, it says live. Um, so I'm live on Facebook and Instagram, simultaneously, because we fancy around here. Um, I, if there are any questions that come in, I'm gonna try to read them, but the screens are pretty far away, and I have a hard time seeing things far away, so I apologize in advance. Um, but yeah, basically today, I wanted to go over kind of what's in my bag and kind of show y'all what I use. Um, ironically, this past week, I've gotten two, yeah, two different people ask me what I use, and like, it's just very random. Um, so I thought I'd just do a, go ahead and do a live and show you. <laughs> um, and I'm sitting on the floor because there's a lot of stuff, and it's just easier to sit on the floor and put my laptop on my, on my coffee table. So yeah, anyways, um, starting, this one is my primary shooting bag. I love this bag. Um, typically, I only take two bags to a wedding, which is this one, and this one to a shoot. I just take this one because I don't need anything else. Um, it is the Low Pro Nova Sport 35, I guess. Um, and I'm learning that it's like a magical uni unicorn bag because it fits literally everything. It's amazing. Um, sorry, I'm out of breath because I just ran up the stairs. Um, and I'm gonna grab my water bottle too, but I just ran up and down the stairs to get a couple things and now I'm like, I can't breathe. <laughs> Which shouldn't be the case because I've been doing cardio in preparation for wedding season. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah, so Low Pro Nova Sport 35, amazing bag. And I'm gonna show you why, because it's awesome. So I'm gonna start in the side pockets. Um, look, I have a wedding favor from a couple weddings ago. And then in here, I basically have a couple lens caps, I have a Magmod base. Um, there's also hairspray in there, because I love hairspray and my hair falls out when it's humid. You have to have hairspray, I'm sorry, I'm a girl. Um, other side has ibuprofen. I got a battery charger over here, and film strip from another wedding. Um, shout out to Emma and Serge, that's from their wedding. Uh, let me see, what else? Oh, and I have a power box for my phone because my phone dies within 10 seconds of shooting a wedding. Doesn't matter how charged it is, it dies within 10 seconds, I don't know what happens. Um, anyways, so moving on, opening it. Oh, nicely, forgot. In here, I just keep memory cards in the front pocket. Super convenient. Um, next, opening up. It is a huge bag. Like I can't. I don't know if you can tell. There's a lot of stuff jammed in there. Um, the benefits of it being a huge bag is it fits a ton of stuff. The downside is it gets a little heavy. Um, I did weigh it. I was traveling with just this bag. I had my laptop in there. It fits 15 inch laptop, by the way. Remember. Um, I weighed it through TSA once I got out of it, or when I got to the airport. And the bag weighed 37 pounds, <laughs> but it fit legitimately every bit of my gear, minus one of my light stands that was in my carry-on bag. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any questions, which there are, that's fine. Um, so first things first, I got my main camera in here. It is a Canon 5D Mark III. Um, I love this camera. I have no reason to upgrade. Um, I could go to a Mark IV or the 5DS or 5DR, or whatever it is. Um, but this camera works great for me. Typically, I'm the type of person that I don't like upgrading right when things come out. I like to wait until the next cycle um, because I'm cheap like that, and I am definitely technologically adverse where I'm like, you know what, it's working right now. Why change things? Um, also, I'm just realizing the lighting is really not as great as I thought it'd be. It's fine, we'll move on. Oh, um, on this camera is a Canon 204070. Um, this typically isn't the lens that I do primarily like a lot of my shooting with um, but typically I use this lens during receptions it's really nice to have the zoom capability when I can't get <laughs> in the middle of the dance floor and I can just stand on a chair and zoom in and, and zoom out and um, but if I do go in the middle of the dance floor it's nice to have a wide angle portion of it um, because typically you're, people are very close to you in the dance floor it's amazing um, Anyways, next, put that over here. Um, also in here, I'm gonna go through lenses first and then I'll pull out the flashes and we'll talk about them. But um, I have my Canon 100 macro, love it. I don't use it for a lot of portion of the day. It's mainly for details in the very beginning of the day. Um, but sometimes during the end, I'll do a couple of ring shots during the reception and, and kind of snag it again. But 
It's kind of just fun to have, and it fits, so I keep it in there. Um, next thing, this is the Sigma 35 lens. I love this lens. Um, it used to be my number one go-to lens. It was my favorite. It's now kind of fallen out of my favorites, um, mainly because I got better lenses. Not better lenses, but lenses that I prefer. Uh, hold on, I think so. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, my lady. She says the lighting's fine. <laughs> Um, it keeps going in and out. This is why I'm on the floor because the lighting's better and whatever. But um, Sigma 35, it's really nice focal length. Um, I do not mind moving my feet, which is why I should primarily shoot with prime lenses, which are not zoom lenses. They're a fixed focal length. Um, I don't mind shooting my feet. I don't mind getting closer. I don't mind giving, getting farther away. So I shoot primarily with, with primes. Um, 35 used to be my go-to. And then I got... Is it this one? Yes, it's this one. It is the Sigma 50 millimeter. Um, that one, love my 50. Um, I never owned the Canon version of it. I had a Nifty 50 when I first started, um, but this is more expensive, so it's nicer, generally. It's just the glass that it's made with is a lot nicer. Hold on, is there a question? <laughs> oh, I die. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Sorry, I'm doing Facebook and Instagram at the same time, so it's like multitasking, um, which is why I'm looking in different places. Hi, Remus! Surprise! I know. Can you lay down, please? Thank you. He's going to lay down right there. Yep. That's his spot whenever I'm in my office. On Instagram, you can't tell, but he's like right there. Um, <laughs> anyways, the Sigma 50. I love this lens. Number one, it's fast. Number two... It has a really wide open aperture, so then I can shoot in low light settings, which if you've ever shot a wedding, most getting ready rooms have really low light, which is fine. They usually have one window, and I utilize that one window as much as possible. Um, but the 50 is a perfect focal length for me 90% um, of the day. Like I said, the 24 to 70 is primarily for receptions, um, just because in a reception room, it's kind of hard to get around because there's generally tables and chairs and people in the way. Uh, so it's nice having the zoom for receptions, but the Sigma 50, love it. I chose the Sigma over the Canon. I read better reviews and it was cheaper. It's really hard to argue with that. Um, next lens, going along the Sigma train, Sigma 85. I also love this lens. It is beautiful. Um, it's also, this is just the hood, but this is also a massive lens. I did not realize this when I bought it, how big it was. Um, and then the box came in, I was like, oh, that's a, that's a good size. I actually bought the 50 and the 85 at the same time, but I was like, oh, that's a good size box. I'm like, I kind of assumed it would be the size of the 50. And then I opened it, I was like, this is ginormous. <laughs> um, but this lens is beautiful, it's a great portrait lens. Um, this is primarily what I'll use during portraits um, when I'm not using the 50. If I want to, if I have this space, which you don't always have the space during weddings, but if I have the space, I will use my Canon 135. Um, this was made for portraits. It's beautiful, the bokeh is really creamy, um, the colors on it are really pretty, uh, which makes a difference to me. I used to own the Canon 70 to 200 f2.8, and I sold it. I didn't like how it looked. I know some people swear by it, but I, didn't like how it looked. It always looked hazy to me, and maybe that's just the copy that I got, and it's just kind of a weird copy, but I sold it, and I got this instead. Um, I find that the 135, I use it for ceremonies especially, unless it is a type of ceremony that's like a garden ceremony that I can get closer, or there's not as many guests, um, then I'll kind of pop on the 85 because I think it's just beautiful, but um, 135, I haven't had an issue using that solely for ceremonies, basically. Um, occasionally during portraits, if I have this space, like physical space. Um, <laughs> he's just staring at me. Um, what was I saying? 135 space? Yeah. This does require... <laughs> that, please. This does require that you have a lot of area, um, because it is a 135. It's a big zoom, basically. Um, now, so if you're keeping count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six lenses in this bag. And I still have two more pockets. Um, in those pockets, 
I keep two flashes. So in my shooting bag, I always have two flashes, and I'll go over what this is in a second. Um, but in my shooting bag, I always have two, uh, two flashes on me, um, mainly because that gives me options. Usually I only need one, especially on, like, engagement shoots. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop scratching. Um, mainly on engagement shoots, I only need one flash. Uh, if I want to get, like, crazy, then I'll go for two flashes. Um, but why don't you get out? Come on. Go lay down somewhere. Thank you. That's a great space as well, yeah. Um, what else was I saying? Oh, these flashes are the Godox. So I bought Godox brand because I love me some Amazon, and they were on Amazon with Prime. Um, they're Godox brand, but Flashpoint, I believe Cheetah. There's another brand as well that they're literally the exact same flash. Like legitimately, it's just different words on it. Uh, but this one's the Godox V860. I got the number two. These are amazing. If you are interested in flash at all, or you have a flash and you're like, oh, I think I want to start to use it. I think it would be helpful. Number one, it is helpful. Um, it's helpful to provide your own sun when there isn't any sun. Um, number two, the reason that these flashes are amazing is because this is the battery. This is a lithium ion, lithium ion battery. I can shoot probably two weddings on this one battery, like realistically, probably two weddings. The second wedding may get a little dicey towards the end, but this battery lasts me forever. I don't have to carry AA batteries with me anymore. I don't have to change them out right after the introductions, right when the ceremony or reception begins. This lasts me the entire wedding, um, and it provides a much faster recycle time. Fire in this. <laughs> go on, go lay down. Thank you. Um, so yeah, lithium iron battery, totally worth the price. Um, it's not that much, much, much more expensive than the types of, uh, flashes that take AA batteries. It's, I can't remember the price now. I'm going to add links and all that stuff later, but, um, it's not that much more expensive. Um, and the fact that you can recharge the battery and it'll last you the entire reception, sometimes even ceremony and reception is so worth it to me, just the convenience factor. Um, another convenience factor is that I can control it all from my camera, either using a flash as the master, or I have, no, nope, this one. Or I have um, triggers, like a trigger that I can put on my camera if I don't want a flash on my camera. Um, you can control all the settings from this little thing right here. It looks like a pager, if any of y'all are young enough to, or old enough. I guess old enough by now to remember pagers and beepers. Looks very similar, at least to me. Um, especially because it's got the little screen on one end that kind of looks like a pager. Moving on. Dating myself a little bit. I never had a pager. I was too young, but I know what they are. Um, go. Hi. Can you lay down? Thank you. He has no idea what's going on. He's trying to figure it out. And he can't seem to get it together. <laughs> um, readiness. Either, either you're in or you're out, buddy. <laughs> um, so I love these flashes. Again, Godox V860s. Yep, V860. Um, they are wonderful. I have four of them. Um, typically, my reception lighting setup is that I have two flashes on stands in the corner of the room. If the room's big enough, then I will have three flashes on stands, um, but it's very, very rare that I have more than two on a stand. Um, and then I will have a flash on top of my camera, and again, I will be using it as a master, and it controls everything. It controls all the other flashes, um, as well as this one on my camera. So that's typically how my reception, so that's why I have four. Um, and let me put that down. So basically, that's all that fits in my camera bag. I have, what, six lenses, two flashes, um, I can fit a laptop with all of that stuff still in there, a 15-inch laptop too, which is just, again, it's a unicorn bag. I love this bag. The only downside that I don't like about this bag is that it is a crossbody, so then it, uh, it tends to hurt your shoulder if you're carrying the 37 pounds that I usually carry. <laughs> so you could carry less. There is also a smaller version of this bag that I started with um, and bought more stuff, so I had to buy the bigger bag. Um, I don't know. I think that one is the, what is it called? The Nova Sports 
17. I think that's the size that one, that one is. Um, yeah. If you have a lot of gear like me and you don't like carrying more than one or two bags, this is your bag right here. Um, unless you have to have a backpack, which I'm trying to find the perfect backpack and or the perfect rolling bag, but I'm finding that it doesn't exist, which is fine. Um, moving on to my flashes, you'll notice that on this one, um, which I need to put it back on this one, but it is a Magmod. If you do not know what Magmod is, shame on you because it's amazing. Um, if you like to play around with flashes or that you're interested in flashes and you want to learn how to control them better, Magmod is the easiest tool to do that with. Um, number one, it's made, it, it functions based off magnets, if that makes sense. So you have this base, it's kind of hard to tell, but you have this base that's basically a huge rubber band that you put on your flash. Um, it stays on there all the time. And then all the little extras just have magnets that pop on there. And it's super easy. Um, it's super easy to give you more control over your flash, to shape it how you want it to. Um, in these front pockets I have, not in this one, in this one I have a couple of gels, and then I also have a grid. Um, I also gel at receptions just to match the ambient light. Makes it a lot easier in editing. If you don't do that, I recommend trying it because it's awesome. Mainly in editing, like I said. Um, moving on. So as you can see, I have some magma stuff in this front pocket as well. And then I also have light stand. It's for like an umbrella holder. Um, I use this to hold on my memory cards. It's ginormous, so it's wonderful because it holds a ton of memory cards. Um, I have both, it's empty right now because I shot a few weddings and engagement shoots on it, so they're all uh, next to my computer to remind me to load them and to finish them, um, which actually I'm caught up right now, so it's wonderful. But um, when I shoot weddings, I typically actually always wear pants um, unless I have to wear a skirt, if it's fancy enough that I have to wear a skirt, but I always wear black pants that have pockets, and I will clip this to my body and it won't ever, it won't be unclipped until I get home that night to load the cards. Um, that way I know that <laughs> this will not get lost because this is the most important thing on a wedding day is the memory and the actual photos from the wedding. Um, going on to this, I have an extra battery in here for my flashes. Um, and then I have, an, I have actually two triggers. Wait for it. I have two triggers to the flashes because I have two cameras. Um, and sometimes I don't want to flash on there, but I'm shooting dual body, so then I need two triggers. Finally, I have AA batteries. Um, the AA batteries are only for these. I don't carry them for my flashes at all because my flashes don't need them. Uh, this pocket is pretty much empty, but it's got some little flash feet. That's pretty much it. So that is an, like this bag. This bag held all that. Um, another cool feature, I'm a big proponent of this bag, but another cool feature of the bag is that on the back, it fits on top of the suitcase. Um, it actually zips and unzips, so it could become just a straight pocket, or you put it on your luggage. It's amazing. Um, which also, if you're carrying the 35 pounds that I typically carry, that's a really big feature if you're traveling with it. Again, don't mind for me. I'm going to step back a little bit. So the other bag that I carry during weddings is this bag. It is a Vanguard. I have it back here. I... I'm going to try to pronounce this. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it correctly, so I'm just going to go ahead and apologize ahead of time. But it's a Vanguard. I got off Amazon like four years ago, like quite a few years ago, and it's held up really, really well. It's got some scuffs because I dropped it recently. But um, it's, I'm going to spell it because I definitely cannot say this. Um, it's X-C-E-N-I-O-R, 4-1-T. Could not say that. Someone help me later, but um, this bag I primarily take only to weddings. Um, it carries, and I'll actually show you what it carries. In here, this bag, or this pocket, it has gels for my video light and like a whole host of like little knickknacks basically. But the main thing that it holds um, is that it has my Black Rapid Slim dual harness, which is all like tangled up to now. Um, I use this primarily during ceremonies. Um, that's about the only time during a wedding that I am shooting with two camera bodies is during the ceremony. Um, and it tends to bleed into the beginning of the reception because I don't have time to take it off between family portraits and reception. 
he's just hanging out. Um, I know Instagram can't see him, it's just laying in the door already. You'll have to hop on Facebook to check him out, but he looks pretty pathetic. Um, I chose the Black Rapid Slim, Double Slim, I think that's what it's called. Bought it maybe two years ago or so. Um, and I like it for the most part. The only downside is um, whenever I have it on and it's got a nice like chest strap so it doesn't slide off the back of your shoulders, the, down, the main downside is that when I pull up my camera to my face and it releases the pressure off my shoulders is that it slides and it's usually choking me within a few seconds of me pulling up my camera to my face. Uh, so that's the biggest downside of this strap. Um, I thought about a, um, a hold fast money maker. To me, I'm not a big fan of leather things. If you notice, like, I don't have a leather bag like most people do. Um, so that was not a big thing. And I only used a strap during a ceremony, so I didn't really need, I didn't need it for the rest of the day. Um, typically, I'm just shooting like freehand, if that makes sense. Um, let me move these ones. This really thick. I can see around the bag. Move this. Um, so the nice thing is it opens up all the way, um, and it's got this wonderful zipper. Uh, actually, you can I should show you this. There's these little hooks with this that will prevent the bag from completely opening if you were to unzip it while it's standing up. Um, I like that feature, but I don't always use it, so sometimes these get in the way. Excuse me. Um, it has this really nice mesh zip lining so that if you do open it while it's standing up, it all your gear doesn't fall out. So that's a really nice thing about it. Um, typically in here, so you can tell, this bag is mostly empty. Uh, I'll show you. Mostly empty. Um, I on a wedding day, I may put a lens in here. Um, I have another, I may put a flash or two in here, depending on the day. But I have my backup. Canon 5D Mark III, that just stays in this bag, except for a wedding day. This is my video light. It's got the barn doors. Um, I love this video light. It's pretty powerful. Um, I pretty much only use it for exits, and it doesn't matter the type of exit because they're typically outside, and I don't want to drag my flash on a stand all the way outside. Um, so typically I just use this during exits. Um, it is the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to say it, it is probably going to be wrong, and we all say it differently, but it's the Yongno YM300. Um, something that I really like about this is that it has, I'm going to try to take it out of here, but it's, it's hard. Um, it has this little, it's basically a gel. Um, it came with four different colored gels, so I can essentially gel this. Like if they're doing a sparkler exit, I will put on the CTO gel to match the color of the fireworks. Um, because they're really orange and the, that gel is really orange. So again, color balancing during editing is a lot easier. Um, moving on, I'm just gonna throw that in there. My other two flashes are in here. They're kind of stacked on each other, which I could probably spread these out. Um, again, I have another MagMod, and this is called a MagSphere. Um, I typically keep this on the camera that's on top of my, or the flash that's on top of my camera during reception. Um, it kind of helps basically spread the light out Instead of the light going straight up, it kind of helps it make it go out and prettier, if that makes any sense. Um, but this bag is primarily empty for the most part during, during most days. A lot of times in like these pockets, I will keep snacks, which you can tell I ate them because <laughs> they're not there. <laughs> um, yeah, they're gone right now. Um, I think that's pretty much it in this bag. There's a battery. Oh, I was looking for that battery. Um, yeah, in the center console or the center pocket, there is batteries for the video light, but for the most part, this bag stays relatively empty. It's kind of nice to have to roll around, but on a wedding day, it's not, not a must-have for me. Um, I was going to say something. I did find out that this bag will fit 90% of what the gray bag fits, what the low pro fits, which is really nice if I don't want to take a carry, like a shoulder bag that's really heavy. Um, I did that with a wedding, I think I did that with a wedding recently where I just took this bag and kind of loaded it up. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, I just took this one and I just kind of loaded it up to the brim but I found that having a rolling bag around instead of a shoulder bag that I can just like 
put over my shoulder and like run to keep up with the bridal party, rolling bag kind of slowed me down a bit. So I'm going to stick with the bag that I carry. Um, the final thing that I was going to show, let me zip all this bag up real quick so I can move it. Yeah. My is cracking me up. Final thing that I was going to show is I have a small soft box. I don't have a bag for it. It came with a bag, but it's kind of a hassle to put it in and out because I'd have to completely deconstruct it from this area. Um, but I have this soft box that's super easy to set up. It takes about 20 seconds. 20 seconds, you pop a flashing right in here that slides in. Um, and then you put it on the stand and it's done. And then it's super, it's gonna make a loud noise. Ready? It's gonna make a loud noise. Makes them panic every time. Um, and then now it's completely deconstructed and I can sort it in the back of my car. Or carry it on a stand, but it's already on. Um, the stands that going on to stands, look at that segue. I'm not even planning it. This is a recent, recent purchase that I'm pretty excited about. It's just really heavy because I have a lot in here. So this is my life stand back. Um, it is technically a DJ stand bag uh, or like a speaker. There's the word. It's a speaker stand bag, which is why it's so big. Um, I have two 13-foot light stands, um, which I love, but the downside is they're really long, so normal light stand bags don't fit all thir like the 13-foot stands when they're collapsed as like, low, small as they can. Um, so finding a bag that's long enough in general is kind of tricky to do. Um, this one fits the bill. And the strap, and there's two versions of this bag. There's one that actually has like a shoulder strap. I believe it has a shoulder strap. This one didn't. It wasn't a priority to me, so I just need something to hold my stuff. Um, so in here I have an inner fit. I think it's technically like a five-in-one. I don't know. It's an inner fit um, rigid frame reflector. Um, if you don't have one of these, they're amazing, number one. Um, they're amazing for two reasons. Number one, reason number one is that it basically, it doesn't bend like the other kind of reflectors do because it is a, like, aluminum frame stand, or not stand, reflector, sorry. I lost my train of thought, so now I'm trying to get it back. Um, it's an aluminum frame reflector. Um, the best part about it is that essentially on a mostly sunny day, half sunny day, it acts like a sock box. Um, it's big. It's it's a ginormous stand. I mean, it's the size of a tabletop, basically. I would get it out, but it's kind of a kind of a pain. Um, you do need a assistant to hold it. It's really hard to hold it yourself and shoot. I have tried. Not the easiest. Um, the other things that are in here. So, like I said, in this bag, just like ginormous bag, I have two 13 foot light stands. The reason that they are 13 feet is that I like to have my flashes during receptions. It's pretty much the only time, for the most part, that I have flashes on a stand, sometimes during portraits, but it just kind of depends on the day um, and how the day is going. Um, but the reason I like 13 foot light stands is that I like to have my flashes over the crowd, um, completely over the crowd. Um, most rooms most venue rooms will allow or like their ceilings are tall enough for the 13 feet. I don't use all 13 feet because sometimes their ceilings are only maybe 12 foot or something or even just 10 feet. 10 feet's fine. Um, there's only been a couple of venues recently that they are nine foot ceilings, <laughs> but they're nine foot ceilings, which surprises me. But again, it's, I mean, 13 foot is plenty. Um, so yeah, I like super tall light stands. Um, that's just my personal preference. That being said, um, I do also have another light stand in here that's only a 10 foot. Um, I use that one sometimes, not all the time. If I need a light on the stand really quick, then I'll pop it up there. But it's kind of like, if one of my stands breaks, then I have a backup. Backups for everything is important. Um, I also have an umbrella in here. I can't, it's on the bottom, so it's hard to pull out. But I think it's a, I'll pull it out. I think I can pull it out. There we go. Um, yeah, I was right. It's a 60 inch um, umbrella. I use it sometimes. Um, a lot of times I'll just use the soft box that I do. I'm like losing my train of thought. 
Um, usually I just use the softbox instead of the umbrella. Um, usually the softbox is closer to me, but if it's an engagement shoot and I have the time, then I'll bust this out. And if it's not windy, that's another contingency. If it's not windy, then I'll bust this out. But if it is windy, then we'll usually go magma. Um, final thing that's in this bag, and pretty much most of my gear other than an array of knickknacks and other little things, um, is this light stand. This is a wonderful light stand. It's a Manfrotto brand. Um, it says on here 5001B, but I mean, really, if you just looked up, like, my, my, I think it's like a micro light stand. Um, this I take traveling. So if I am traveling for an engagement shoot or traveling for a wedding, I will take this light stand. It actually fits in my carry-on bag, um, fits diagonally, and then I'll pack clothes around it and shoes and everything. But this is amazing. I take it on um, engagement shoots with me. And that's typically the only light stand that I take with me on engagement shoots. And the way that I carry it is I'm going to slap it like this and then buckle it in. And then I don't have to carry it with my hand. Um, so that's the nice part about it. Again, uniform bag. Love this bag. Uh, but basically this stand, the legs just kind of fold out like this. And then it goes up from there. And it's wonderful. And it's super, super portable. Um, so yeah. So that is pretty much all of my stuff. Um, I just wanted, like I said, I had like two or three people this week alone ask me, what kind of gear do you use? What kind of gear do you recommend? Like, what do you prefer? So I thought I would just go ahead and do videos to, or I guess it's just one video, it's just two different devices, but um, I'll just go ahead and do a video to let y'all know and whatever, so I could just send them a link. It'd be super easy. Uh, but yeah, I am probably going to probably going to write a blog post and then link everything. So if you're interested in anything like this, let me know, shoot me a message, um, or shoot me an email, whatever you want, or just check out the blog post when it's up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Remus, do you want to say hi? Come here. Yeah. Oh, we have to stretch first. Oh, Atlanta. Can you say bye? Say bye, bye. Look over there and say goodbye. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Okay, we're gonna go leave now. Okay. Say bye. All right, how am I end this? And how do I do it?